Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number three of the course on statistics and probability. Students, aapko yaad hoga ke last time humne do main concept discuss kiye the sampling or methods of data collection. Sampling ke andar humne mukhtalif jo techniques hain sampling ki un pe ek brief discussion ki thi aur sabse zyada waqt humne simple random sampling ko diya tha jiske sath hum is course ke dauran zyada waqt guzarenge dusra jo topic tha that was method of data collection aur usme humne jo mukhtalif instruments hain ya mukhtalif methods hain data collection ke wo discuss kiye the jaisa ke interview method uh, questionnaire method or uh, direct personal observation bagaira in today's lecture i will discuss with you uh, various techniques of representing the data that we have collected in particular today i will deal with you uh, about the techniques for representing qualitative data which will include tabulation uh bar chart multiple bar chart component bar chart pie chart and some other things of the sort um you can see on the screen a tree diagram which gives you the two broad categories of data that you have as mentioned in the first lecture also you will distinctly remember that there are two types of data qualitative data and quantitative data today i will be picking up the qualitative category of data and i will discuss with you the various ways of representing qualitative data in case of a univariate situation as well as in case of a bivariate situation for the univariate situation we will be constructing the frequency table and also we will be drawing the pie chart and the bar chart for the bivariate frequency table we will be doing the component bar chart and the multiple bar chart let us begin with an example suppose that we are carrying out a survey of the students of first year jo lahore ke ek coeducational कॉलेज में पढ़ रहे हैं सपोज दैट इन ऑल देर आर ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड स्टूडेंट्स जो इस कॉलेज के फर्स्ट ईयर में पढ़ रहे हैं और हम इस बात में इंटरेस्टेड हैं कि हम ये पता करें कि इनमें से कितने स्टूडेंट्स उर्दू मीडियम स्कूलों से आए हैं और कितने स्टूडेंट्स इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूलों से आए सो वॉट विल वी डू ऑब्वियसली वी विल कंडक्ट एन इंटरव्यू आई मीन दैट्स वन वे वी कैन डू इट कि हम इन सब का इंटरव्यू कर लें और उनसे सिंपली ये बात पता करें कि वो किस स्कूल से आए एज अ रिजल्ट वी विल ऑप्टेन अ सेट ऑफ डेटा लाइक द वॉट यू कैन नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वी विल हैव अ सेट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन लाइक उर्दू उर्दू इंग्लिश उर्दू इंग्लिश इंग्लिश यानी ए जैसे जैसे आपको जवाब आते गए उसके मुताबिक आप वो डेटा आपका आ जाएगा नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट शुड वी डू विद दिस डेटा ऑब्वियसली द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट कम्स टू माइंड इज टू काउंट द नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हु सेड उर्दू मीडियम एंड द नंबर हु सेड इंग्लिश मीडियम सपोज करें कि उन 1200 स्टूडेंट्स में से 719 ने कहा कि वो उर्दू मीडियम स्कूल स्कूलों से आए हैं और चार सौ इक्यासी ने कहा कि दे हैव कम फ्राम इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल दिस विल रिजल्ट इन अ टेबल ऑफ द काइंड दैट यू कैन नाउ सी फर्स्ट कॉलम में ऑब्वियसली वी विल राइट उर्दू एंड इंग्लिश मीडियम एंड इन द सेकेंड कॉलम वी विल राइट नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स बिलोंगिंग टू ईच ऑफ दीज कैटेगरीज अब आप नोट कर रहे होंगे कि सेकेंड कॉलम में मैंने एक लेटर लिखा हुआ है and that is f 
Now, what does F represent? F is the uh, notation for the term frequency. And this is a very, very important term in statistical terminology. And what do I mean by frequency? It means how frequently something happens. Kitni martaba aisa hua. Chunke 1200 students mein se 719 ne kaha ki hum Urdu medium schoolon se aaye hain. Isliye the frequency of that first category of students is 719. Similarly, the frequency for the English medium schooling is 481. Frequency to mil gayi. But I think you will agree that this information is not, not as useful as if I was to convert these figures into percentages. So that is the next step, as you now see on the screen. Uh, we will simply divide the frequency of the first cell, 719, by the total 1200 and multiply by 100 in order to get the percentage of students falling in, uh, in the first category, that is Urdu medium. So as you can see, 60% of, of the students in the first year of this particular college have come from Urdu medium schools, and 40% have come from English medium schools. Students, what we have just accomplished is an example of a univariate frequency table pertaining to qualitative data. Ab is jumle mein maine kai alfaz istemal kiye, univariate, frequency table, or qualitative. Tino alfaz pe ghor ki je. Univariate kyu? Is liye ke hum is example mein sirf ek variable ke saath deal kar rahe hain, and that is the medium of schooling. Yani jis school se wo aaye, aaya wo Urdu medium tha ya English medium. जो दूसरी टर्म मैंने इस्तेमाल की फ्रीक्वेंसी टेबल उसकी वजह मैं अभी आपको बता चुकी हूं कि जब कभी भी हम नंबर ऑफ आइटम्स जो फॉल करेंगे किसी पर्टिकुलर कैटेगरी में उस नंबर को जब हम जब हम काउंट करेंगे तो उसे हम कहते हैं फ्रीक्वेंसी हाउ फ्रीक्वेंटली दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग हैपेंड और तीसरा लव्स मैंने कहा Okay, this is pertaining to qualitative data. Is pe to bohat dafa baat ho chuki hai. Zahir hai ke Urdu medium does not mean 1.79 and English medium does not mean 3.21. Isko aap numerically express nahi kar sakte. And we are definitely dealing with qualitative data. Let us now see how we can represent this uh, data in the form of a diagram. One of the very interesting and uh, useful ways of representing this data is in the form of a pie chart. Let us now see how we can represent this information in the form of a diagram. One of the very interesting and effective ways of representing this kind of data diagrammatically is to, do, to draw a pie chart. A pie chart consists of a circle which is divided into two or more parts in accordance with the number of categories that we have in our data. Abhi abhi jo example humne kiya, usme jaisa ke aapne dekha ke humara jo variable hai medium of schooling, wo sirf do categories mein divided tha, Urdu medium or English medium. Is hisab se, इस पर्टिकुलर एग्जांपल में हमारा पाई चार्ट जो है हमारा सर्कल जो है वो सिर्फ दो ही पार्ट्स में डिवाइड होगा एज यू कैन नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन उर्दू मीडियम के लिए वी हैव द लार्जर पार्ट ऑफ द सर्कल इसलिए कि आपको याद होगा कि 60% ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स बिलोंग्ड टू उर्दू मीडियम स्कूल्स और इसी तरह इंग्लिश मीडियम के लिए हमारे सर्कल का जो Chota, relatively chota jo hissa hai, that is for English medium, because 40% of the students came from these schools. Ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke 
how do we decide at what angle we are supposed to cut this circle? Well, the answer is very simple. All we have to do is to convert our frequencies into angles and we do that by dividing the frequency of any cell by the total and multiplying by 360. Jaise ke aap sab ne aur hum sab ne elementary school mein padha tha, uh, there are 360 degrees in a circle. Is liye jab hum 719 ko 1200 se divide karne ke baad 360 se multiply karenge, to hume angle mil jayega 215.7 degrees. Jise aap round karein to 216 degrees bhi keh sakte hain. Lihaza, aap jab diagram banane lagenge, to aap apna jo angle hai, usko 216 ya 215.7 pe set karenge. In this way, you achieve a very attractive and beautiful diagram called the pie chart. Students, the next diagram that I will discuss with you is the simple bar chart. This is also going to be uh, used in case of a univariate frequency table pertaining to qualitative data. Simple bar chart kya cheez hai? Is mein hum bars draw karte hain, either vertical or horizontal. Most of the time th we take them vertically and the widths of these bars are equal but the lengths of the bars vary depending on the size of our data. So let us consider an example. Suppose that we have data about the turnover of a company for a period of five years as you can now see on the screen. Suppose that uh, this turnover is for the years from 19 85 to 1989 and the figures are 35,000, 42,000, 43,500, 48,000 and 48,500 rupees. Ab sawaal ye hai ke is information ko agar hum bar chart ke zariye represent karna chahe to kis tarah proceed karenge? All we have to do is to take the years along the x-axis and to construct a scale for turnover along the y-axis as you now see on the screen. Next, against each year, we will draw vertical bars of equal width and different heights in accordance with the turnover figures that I just shared with you. As a result, we obtain a simple and yet a very beautiful diagram as you now see on the screen. Students, I would like to convey to you a very important point and that is a mathematical point. Point ye hai ke agar te in bars ki lambaiyaan bhi hain aur widths bhi hain. Lekin in widths ki mathematically koi significance nahi hai. It is only the length of the bar which conveys the figure that we are trying to represent. So, then the question is that why did we have these widths? Then we could simply have drawn a line. Well, actually that is true. We could have simply drawn vertical lines and we did not need any width of, for any of these bars. But this is only because that the moment you assign a certain width, the chart becomes very attractive and particularly so if you are coloring it according to any beautiful color of your choice. Students, what we have discussed until now is the univariate situation. Let us now discuss the bivariate situation. You see, because in the real world, most of the time we are not dealing with just one variable you know, we are interested in phenomena in which many variables play together and interact with each other. 
So, if we want to begin with a very simple example, let us go back to the example of the uh, students of first year in that co-educational college that I was talking about. Suppose we are not interested in this thing that we overall know that we came from Urdu medium school or English medium. But we are also interested in that we distinguish between girls and girls in this regard. Yani ye pata kare ke out of the female students, how many came from Urdu medium and how many from English medium and similarly for the male students. To aise situation mein phir hum kya karenge? Zahir hai ke is ka matlab ye hai ke ab humne jo data collect karna hai that must cover not only the medium of schooling but also the sex of the student. Suppose we do that and we interview every one of those 1200 uh, students of first year of that college and we ask him or her uh, what was your school and also we note down the gender of the student. As a karne se, of course, we will get a table in which we will now have three columns as you can see on the screen. The first one, of course, gives us the student number, one, two, three, four, and so on. And the second gives us the schooling medium, and the third one gives us the gender of the student. Which, uh, if you look at the uh, table, uh, if the data is as you see, it means that the first student that we recorded, she was coming from an Urdu medium school. The second student was a boy, and he also had come from an Urdu medium school and so on and so forth. Now, the question is that we will summarize the data of this kind of Alright, in this case, we will construct a frequency table which is called a bivariate frequency table. It will consist of a box of the type that you now see on the screen. This Row hai, that is called the box head or jo sabse pehla column hai, that is called the stub. Now it is our choice whether we want to uh, write the sex of the student on the top or do we want to write the medium of schooling on the top. It does not matter, that is your choice. Suppose kare ke hum student ke gender ko uh, box head mein likh lete hai or the medium of schooling is in the stub. That will result in the table that you now see. Now, the overall structure of the table has been given. But the question is how will we fill it? It is obvious that we will have to count. We will have to count these, uh, this data in four categories. We have to know how many students were male and came from Urdu medium schools? How many students were female and came from Urdu medium schools? How many students were male and came from English medium schools? And how many students were female and came from English medium schools? Doing this, students, suppose we get the figures that you now see on the screen. 1200 students may say 202 male students the or Urdu medium schools se aaye the. Jabke 517 female students the or Urdu medium schools se hi aaye the. Agar aap gaur kare to 202 and 517 add up to 719 exactly the same figure that we had earlier when we were not considering the sex of the student. Similarly, uh, 350 students male nikle jo ke English medium schoolon se aaye the aur uh, 131 uh, ladkiyan jo ke English medium schoolon se aaye thi. These two figures 350 and 131 add up to 481 exactly the same figure that we had earlier for English medium. Students, 
what we have just accomplished is a bivariate frequency table pertaining to qualitative data. Now you note that I have used three alphas bivariate which I am sure now you readily recognize frequency table is like that all the figures jo hain, they are frequencies of the various joint events that we were consider considering or uh, qualitative data is like gender of the student or uh, medium of schooling dono hi non numerical data hai. Ab dekhte hain ke is tarah ke data ko hum diagrammatically kis tarah represent karenge. For this we have a very interesting um, diagram and that is called the component bar chart. Isi ko subdivided bar chart bhi kehte hain. What we have to do in this particular case is that first of all we will draw a simple bar chart using one of the two variables that we have. Jaise ke aap screen pe dekh rahe hain, sabse pehle to hum gender ke hisaab se uh, charts draw kar, de, kar denge. Male students ki tadad chuke kam thi, is liye us ki lambai jaise ke aap dekh rahe hain, uh, female students wali jo bar hai, us se kam hai. Now once we have done this, the next step is to divide each of the two bars into two parts. Or ye jo division hai, ye hum karenge according to the medium of schooling. Ab ye humare apni marzi hai ke hum English medium ko niche rakhna chahte hain kisi bhi bar mein ya Urdu medium ko niche rakhna chahte hain. Suppose karein ke hum ye decide karte hain ke hum bar ka jo nichla hissa hai usse English medium ke liye allocate karenge aur bar ka jo upper wala hissa hai usse Urdu medium ke liye karenge. If we do that we get the diagram that you now see on the screen. Now you can see that among the male students there was a greater number of English medium students than among the female students and this is very clearly depicted in this subdivided bar chart. Students, ye component bar chart jo abhi abhi humne discuss kiya, it is a very effective and useful diagram. Iska sabse bada fayda ye hai ke ek hi nazar mein aapko dono variables ka comparison mil jata hai. You can compare the number of male students with the number of female students and also you can compare the proportion of English medium students among the males with the proportion of English medium uh, students among the females. The next diagram that we will discuss today is the multiple bar chart. A multiple bar chart is also a very interesting diagram and a very beautiful diagram and it is used in a situation where we have two or more related sets of data. Let us consider an example. Suppose we have, as you can now see on the screen, data about the imports and exports of Pakistan for the years 1970-71 to 1974-75. And uh, suppose that we wish to represent this information in the form of a multiple bar chart. To iske liye hum kya karenge? This time we will be drawing vertical bars, one for imports and the other for exports in such a way that both the bars will be adjacent to each other, yani wo ek dusre ko touch kar rahi hongi. For example, jab aap 1970-71 ke liye bars draw karna chahenge, to jo pehli bar hai, that will be 370 units long aur jo dusri bar hai, that will be 200 units long. Similarly, jab aap 71-72 ke liye draw karenge, 
the first one will be 350 units long and the second one 337. In this manner, you will get a diagram as you now see on the screen. Now, one thing which is very important is the shading of the diagram. Chunke har year ke liye pehli bar imports ko represent kar rahi hai, is liye it's natural ke hame imports ke liye ek color istamal karna chahiye. Similarly, the second bar is representing the exports and hence we use a different color for the exports. As a result, we get a very interesting and uh, beautiful diagram as you now see. This example we have done now, we had two related variables, the imports and exports. But of course, the multiple bar chart can also be used effectively if we have three pieces of information. If we have imports and exports, ke ilawa production ka bhi data, hota, so we could simply have drawn one more bar against each year uh, adjacent to the first two and we would have used a different color for that third bar. Students, what is the basic difference between a component bar chart and a multiple bar chart? And this is a point where students are confused. Although it is very simple, the only thing to remember is that the component bar chart is to be used when we are dealing with totals and their components. For example, jo humne first year students wali example ki, usme we had the total number of male students out of which so many were English medium and so many were Urdu medium. Similarly, we had the total number of female students out of which so many were English medium and so many were Urdu medium. Iske baraks, multiple bar chart vahaan istamal karenge, jahaan pe wo jo do pieces of information hai, they are related but they do not add up to give you some one thing. Imports and exports cannot be added to give you some one quantity the way you had in the first exam. Students, Aaj ke is lecture mein humne abhi tak jo discussion ki hai that was pertaining to a qualitative variable or more than one qualitative variables. Let us now start the discussion of the quantitative situation. As you can see on the screen, the quantitative variable is of two types as of course we have discussed in our first lecture the discrete variable and the continuous variable. For the discrete variable, we will be constructing a frequency distribution and will be drawing a line chart. For the continuous variable, again, we will be constructing a frequency distribution and will be drawing the histogram, the frequency polygon and the frequency curve. Let us first consider the discrete case with the help of a very simple example. Suppose we walk into the nursery class of a small primary school and we count the number of books and copies that every student has in his or her bag. Obviously, we will get data which will be in whole numbers as you can now see on the screen. Three, five, seven, nine. This is the number of books and copies that the various children have in their bags. Ab is data ko hum frequency distribution mein kis tarah convert karenge? The first thing to do is to denote our variable by x and then make a column of the x values that we have in our data. So as you now see, we will have a column which, uh, which is headed number of books and the number of books is denoted by x and the numbers are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Vajayye ke jis school mein hum gaye the, uski nursery class mein 
بچوں کے پاس جو کتابیں تھیں ان کی منیمم تعداد تھری تھی اور میکسیمم تعداد نائن تھی سو وی ہیو دا کالم آف دا ویریبل ایکس نیکسٹ وی نیڈ ٹو کاؤنٹ دا نمبر آف ٹائمس دا ویریس ویلیوز آف ایکس اکر ان آور ڈیٹا سو فار دس پرپز وی ول کنسٹرکٹ ٹو مور کالمس وچ آر اجیسنٹ ٹو دا کالم دیٹ وی ہیو جسٹ کنسٹرکٹیڈ دا فرسٹ آف دیز ٹو کالمس از فار ٹیلی مارکس اینڈ دا سیکنڈ فار فریکوینسی سو جیسا کہ آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں ہمارے پاس اب تین کالم ہیں جن میں سے سیکنڈ کالم کو اب ہمیں بھرنا ہے ایز یو سو اے شارٹ وائل اگو آور ڈیٹا کنسٹ آف دا ویلیوز تھری فائیو سیون نائن اینڈ سو آن سو اف وی وانٹ ٹو ڈو دس پروسیس آف ٹیلینگ مینولی دین آف کورس دا ایزیسٹ وے از ٹو پک اپ دا ویلیوز ون بائی ون اینڈ پٹ اے ٹیلی مارک ان دا سیکنڈ کالم آف آور ٹیبل سو بیکاز دا فرسٹ ویلیو از تھری وی ول پٹ اے اسٹروک ان دا سیکنڈ کالم اگینسٹ دا نمبر ایکس ایکول ٹو تھری ایز یو کین ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین اس سے اگلی ویلیو جو ہے دیٹ از فائیو اینڈ ہینس ایز یو کین ناؤ سی آور سیکنڈ ٹیلی اسٹروک ول بی اگینسٹ دا ویلیو ایکس ایکول ٹو فائیو سو اٹ از اے ویری سمپل پروسیس ہم اپنے ڈیٹا سیٹ کی ایک ایک ویلیو اٹھاتے جائیں گے اور ایکس کالم کے اگینسٹ پراپر جگہوں پر اس کو مارک کرتے جائیں گے ناؤ کنٹینیوئنگ ان دس پروسیس وی آپٹین دا ڈسٹریبیوشن دیٹ وی دیٹ یو ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین ہم نے تمام ویلیوز کو ٹیلی مارکس کے کالم میں ٹیلی کر دیا اور اس کے نتیجے میں ہمارا سارا کا سارا ڈیٹا اس ٹیبل کے اندر سما گیا اب جو چیز نوٹ کرنے کی ہے جیسا کہ آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ ہر چار ورٹیکل اسٹروکس کے بعد پانچواں جو اسٹروک ہے وہ ہاریزونٹلی ڈالا گیا ہے اس طرح سے کہ وہ پہلی چار لائنوں کو انٹرسیکٹ کرتا ہے دس از اونلی فار کنوینئنس دا ریزن از دیٹ اٹ از ایزی فار ایس ٹو کاؤنٹ دا نمبر آف اسٹروکس if they have been grouped into sets of five rather than if all of them were in the form of vertical bars ab sawal ye hai ke is table ko jo humne abhi abhi construct ki hai frequency distribution kyun kehte hain the reason is that the total frequency 45 has been distributed among the various values of x one of those 45 values has been allocated to x equal to 3 three of the 45 values have been allocated to x equal to 4 nine of the values have been allocated to x equal to 5 and so on yani bahut simple si baat hai ke total frequency ko humne distribute kar diya among the various categories and that is why it is appropriate to call it a discrete frequency distribution let us now consider the graphical representation of this table that we have just uh, constructed the best way of doing this is by way of the line chart the line chart is in a way quite similar to the simple bar chart that we discussed a short while ago when we were dealing with the um, situation of a univariate frequency table وہاں پہ آپ کو یاد ہوگا کہ آپ نے وہ بارز بنائی تھیں جن کی لمبائیاں ان ویلیوز کے مطابق تھیں جو ہم ریپرزینٹ کرنا چاہ رہے تھے لیکن اس میں آپ کو یاد ہوگا کہ اس کی ان سب بارز کی ایک وٹس بھی تھی جن کو ہم نے کلر کر دیا تھا ان آرڈر ٹو میک دا چارٹ ویری اٹریکٹیو آپ کو یاد ہوگا کہ میں نے اسی وقت کہا تھا کہ ان اس وہ جو وٹ ہے اس کی کوئی میتھمیٹیکل سگنیفیکنس نہیں ہے یہاں پہ ہم وہ وٹ نہیں بنائیں گے this is going to be more accurate from the mathematical standpoint all we have to do is to take the x values along the x axis and the frequencies along the y axis 
as you now see on the screen. Iske baad, we will be drawing vertical lines against each value of x in accordance with the frequencies that we have. You will remember that the frequency of x is equal to 3 was 1 and hence the first vertical line is only one unit tall. The second frequency was 3 and accordingly the line is 3 units tall. Similarly, we have for all the values and as such we get a simple and yet effective way of representing a discrete frequency distribution. Is me jo baat important hai wo ye hai ke aap ye dekhen ke we have used separate lines rather than a continuous curve that we usually draw when we are drawing graphs. This is very important. The reason is that we are dealing with a discrete variable and our graph must convey the concept of discontinuity. Agar hum ye separate lines na banate balke in points ko plot karke hum ek continuous um, curve ke zariye unko jod dete to that would have given an impression of continuity which as I mentioned earlier is not going to be appropriate for this kind of an example. Ek bache ke bag mein ya teen kitabe hongi ya char hongi sare teen kitabe nahi hongi. Is liye this is a very important point that the reason why a line chart is a better way of representing discrete variable is that the separate lines do convey the concept of discontinuity. Students, what we have just done is the tabular uh, and uh, diagrammatic representation of a discrete variable. Ye jo discrete frequency distribution ka concept hai, is me दो तीन कॉन्सेप्ट्स हैं जो के मैं अभी आपको कन्वे करना चाहती हूँ। अभी अभी जो हमने बनाई थी, they were the frequencies, the absolute frequencies, जैसा कि आपको ने आपको याद होगा और आप स्क्रीन पे भी देख रहे हैं कि there was only one student who had three books and three students who had four. Now this information is not extremely useful uh, if we for if supposing we did not have the call, the value of the total number of students. Agar aap wo 45 wahan se ghaib kar dete, to aap ek dam se judge na kar paate ke kya situation hai. So what we do is to construct a column of relative frequencies and that is called a relative frequency distribution. Ab relative frequency se kya murad hai? Extremely simple. All we will be doing is to divide every frequency by the total frequency and that will give us the relative frequency of that particular x value. We can convert these relative frequencies into percentages and as we all know, uh, percentages jo hain wo to ek uh, aam aadmi bohut jaldi samajhta hai. Shayad relative frequency wo, wo itni jaldi na samaj pae. All we have to multiply the relative frequency of any x value by the number 100. As you all know, that's a very simple procedure. So, 1 over 45 into 100 gives you the percentage of students who had 3 books in their bags and uh, 9 over 45 into 100 gives you the percentage of students who had 5 books in their bag. Another very interesting and important concept is that of the cumulative frequencies. Dekhye, mumkin hai ke hume is tarah ki information mein interest ho ke ji is class mein kitne bachche hain ya kitne fiisad bachche hain jin ke paas jo apne gharon se teen se zyada kitabe lekar nahi aate. Halaan ke jo unki jo requirement hai uske mutabik unko दो रोज छह या सात सब्जेक्ट पढ़ने होते हैं और उसके मुताबिक उनको छह या सात किताबें लानी चाहिए थी। So if we are interested in this kind of information, how many students brought only three, four, or at the most five books, and not more than that? तो हम ये किस तरह से मालूम करेंगे? जैसा कि आप स्लाइड में देख रहे हैं, we have one student. Uh, who brought three books, 
three students who brought four and nine students who brought five. Zahir hai ke hume inko in teen numberon ko add karna padega in order to get the total number of students who brought five or less books. Yani one plus three plus nine. In other words, 13. So out of 45, 13 students are of this type who did not bring more than five books. So, this way you are seeing that it is very confusing if we want to study directly from this So, a very convenient way of uh, getting over, the, over this problem is by constructing another column, a column of cumulative frequencies. All we have to do is this. The first frequency 1 remains as it is. 1 plus 3 equal to 4 comes against the value x equal to 4. 4 plus 9 equal to 13 is written against x equal to 5. 13 plus 13 equal to 26 is written against x equal to 6 and so on. As you can see, the last cumulative frequency is 45, exactly the same as the total number of students that we had in our data set. Ab is column ko padhne se, hume bohat asani ke saath malum ho jata hai ke how many students brought 5 books or less, 7 books or less, 3 books or less. For example, as you can see, uh, in a glass we can say that 13 students were such who brought 5 books or less and 26 students were such who brought 6 or less. So this is the advantage of a cumulative frequency distribution. In this lecture, we have discussed many topics. Discuss kiye hai. I started from the tabular and diagrammatic representation of qualitative data and we discussed both cases, the univariate situation and the bivariate situation. Uske baad, we dealt with the tabular and diagrammatic representation of a discrete quantitative variable. Next time, we will be discussing the tabular and diagrammatic representation of continuous quantitative variable. In particular, we will be doing the continuous frequency distribution, the histogram, the frequency polygon, and the frequency curve. Also, we will be doing the cumulative frequency distribution for a continuous situation and we will be drawing the cumulative frequency polygon which is also called OGIP. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you students to practice the various concepts that we have discussed today and I would like to uh, recommend to you to attempt at least four or five questions of the exercise of chapter two in your textbook. Best of luck. And until next time, Allah Hafiz.